I'm Jack Youngblood and this is how I traveled the country by myself for one month living in the car. Since we just came off the series of Road Back Home or The Road Back, I decided I wanted to share a few tips of how I lived on the road for so long. Excluding the week or so that I was in Arizona for, I'm gonna show you guys how I ate, what I ate, how I slept, where I slept, and how I did it in the cheapest way that I could. The first thing I did was that I brought a cooler and I ate cheaply in the car. One good tip when you do bring a cooler is that you need to buy ice every two or three days. I ate some fast food. Most of the time I didn't want to spend a lot. For breakfast, I usually ate muffins and bagels. At the beginning of the trip, I did McDonald's breakfast, which I decided probably wasn't the best thing for me. Pretty much just choosing off the dollar menu. I had stuff like turkey, cheese sticks. By turkey, I mean a little slabs of turkey that you can roll up around a cheese stick. Obviously not a full turkey breast. I also had bread, peanut butter, candy and snacks so that I wouldn't fall asleep on the road. And then I also kept water bottles at all times in my cooler. At this point that we're recording, maybe if you can tell, I have long hair now. I had long hair back then, but I mean, it, it's been like a month and a half. It's almost Christmas. It's December 16th right now that I'm recording this video, which this isn't gonna be out until probably February. The next point we're gonna get into is how I slept. And the main points that I'm gonna suggest is that you have a pillow, a mattress, and a blanket. Obviously, a mattress won't work out if you have a sedan. I would suggest bringing a mattress doesn't have to be a huge one. I had about a four inch thick mattress on my trip. If it's cold, definitely pack some wool socks, hoodies, sweatpants, because it gets very, very cold when you turn your car off to sleep. If it's warm weather, I had a portable fan that I was able to hang on the little hangers in the car. It was a battery powered fan. It lasted for 24 hours. I got it on Amazon for cheap. Another great thing that I would recommend if you don't like people watching you sleep or the thought of people being able to see you sleeping in your car, buy some window covers. They really make you feel a lot more relaxed when you're sleeping because you know that nobody's watching you. <laughs> Obviously, when the car isn't running, you can't charge your phone. So if you're on a long road trip, Charge your phone while you're driving at all times. That's what I did the entire time. So my phone never died on the trip. It was always fully charged before I went to sleep and then I would just charge it again when I woke back up. Cause most of the time I would have about an eight hour, 10 hour drive total for the day. So if I kept my phone plugged in, it would be fine. And that leads us into our next point of where I slept. I slept at truck stops. There was one night that I slept in a Walmart parking lot I didn't feel that safe just because I got so used to truck stops. Truck stops are 24 hours. There are some Walmarts that were 24 hours, but the one I slept at wasn't, and that was my last option because I was in an area where there were no truck stops. I think that was in Colorado. The two main truck stops that I would always stop at was Love's and Pilot. Honestly, I didn't prefer one over the other. They're very similar. They're open 24 seven. Usually the staff are always nice, especially if you're in the mountains like Utah or Colorado like I was or South Dakota. A few tips for sleeping at these truck stops. The first one, I would say park around others. Don't stand out, don't park at the end of a parking space, but that's what I would recommend just to feel safest and it's probably the safer bet anyways. The next tip I'm gonna give is kind of a given. Some people just brush their teeth outside, use a water bottle to spit it out and everything. I would recommend just go to the truck stop bathroom. They're typically always clean. I experienced some dirty ones, but mostly clean. They usually do a good job with that because they have so many people sleeping overnight. The trucks, the vans, the cars. So they wanna make sure that their guests are happy. Another tip that I would recommend is that you set an alarm for 7 or 8 a.m. I only did this because I liked being up before most people. It felt a little bit uncomfortable when the regular people started going to the gas station. I could hear them all around me going into the gas station and then I'm just sleeping in the car. The next point I'm getting to isn't exactly a tip. It's kind of just how I did it, but I didn't show it on camera. It was changing my clothes in the car. Obviously, I'm not gonna show that. It is very difficult. I'm six foot five, so changing in the car was very difficult for me, but I got used to it at some point. Moving the bags around to get the clothes out and everything was a little bit difficult. Figure out a way that you can change in the car. I changed in the car, in the back, laying down on the mattress. But most of you are probably not six foot five like me, so it would probably be simpler for you guys. <laughs> the final thing about truck stops is that they do offer showers. They range from about 10 to $15. I wouldn't recommend them because they're truck stop showers and I can't imagine that those are very clean. And of course, since we're in the middle of the video, 
don't forget to buy some merch. It's amazing quality. I really love the fit of the shirts. It makes me feel really good. The hoodies are amazing too. They're very comfortable, very fitting. Make sure you go get yours. I'll leave a link in the description. Make sure you go get the merch. Now back to the video. The drives can be long. They can be very boring. It'll get to you. And sometimes two minute, three minute songs are not gonna do it because then you need to keep changing them and changing them. So one thing that I did the entire trip, I actually did not listen to any music when I was on my trip. I listened to podcasts. I listened to like YouTubers podcasts, Logan Paul, David Dobrik, the Nelk Boys. Podcasts usually range from about one to two hours. And if you're on a long drive, those podcasts will make the time go by so quickly. The next point we're getting into is let yourself have breaks. Now what I mean by that is eating breaks, maybe stop at a national park if you like hiking. If you're passing by a city, maybe go check out the city, go get something to eat, walk around. Why not? You're traveling, so why not make the most of that experience? And the last advice that I have for you guys, traveling on the road is not easy. It can get to you at times, especially living in the car. It can really make you question why am I doing this? Enjoy the stops along the way, and I guarantee you, it will make you more low maintenance at the end. Solo traveling around the country for a month will make you very low maintenance. After all of that, I can say it's 100% worth it. And if you don't believe me, go to my Instagram right down below. I'll leave a link in the description. I have tons of pictures, tons of Instagram reels about the entire trip. And obviously you guys can check out all the videos from my two series previously on my channel. So all of that is up there. All of it's on the internet. So if you don't believe me, go watch for yourself. But anyways, I hope I helped you guys learn a few things about living on the road. That's all for me. As always, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, but as always, don't forget to drop a like on the video. Subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys on the next adventure.